Let's look at a common issue that Singaporeans like to argue about, whether or not housing is actually affordable in this country. In 2022, with prices that are so high, can the average Singaporean still truly afford a home? Hi, I'm Ryan Ong from Stack Homes. Thanks for joining me today. Today, we're going to address something of a hot button topic. It's whether or not housing truly is affordable especially to the average Singaporean. Very big concern right now in 2022. We know that our home prices are all at a peak. We know that uh, for those of us using bank loans, you know, the interest rates are going up. So we are not really surprised that home buyers are starting to get anxious at this point. That leads to that old uh, battleground of very divisive opinions. How affordable is housing in Singapore exactly? There are a lot more details on this in the Stacked Homes article. There were a lot of numbers. Uh, it's probably more practical for you to look through them rather than for me to just read all of them out. So do visit the Stacked Homes editorial as well for probably a more detailed breakdown of what you're hearing here. So according to what we saw on SingStat, the median monthly household income is rising. It is currently at around 9520 a month. That's inclusive of your CPF contributions. That was of 2021. And with the exception of 2020, which was when COVID-19 was at its peak, the median monthly household income has actually risen every single year since 2010. Now, in terms of savings, we saw a recent answer to a parliamentary question that sheds a little bit of light on it. So we heard that between 2017 and 2020, personal savings actually grew by quite a bit. Personal savings in total, all of us, grew from 67 billion to 106 billion, while the savings rate rose from 28.6% to 40.6%. So Singaporeans are saving a lot more money as well. But even though median income is growing and Singaporeans are saving more, uh, the key question here is whether or not it has kept pace with the rising home prices in the country. Now, as of the latest news that we had, which was in end 2021, we know that residential property actually makes up the biggest chunk of our household assets. For most Singaporeans, you'll find about 42% of their total assets are pretty much tied up in the home that they own. And at the same time, our biggest liabilities are also our residential property. Collectively, we owe about 363.5 billion in home loans right now. For the typical Singaporean, that could amount for about as much as, you know, 70% of our liabilities. I don't think this surprises most people if you go out and ask them, you know, what's the most expensive bill that they have to pay every month, they are probably going to tell you, oh, it's my housing loan. So as befits our growing savings rate though, when it comes to things like personal loans, those are actually a very small portion of our liabilities. Now, uh, all of this is not uncommon that mortgages make up the bulk of our liabilities. This is going to be true in most countries that you go to. So almost everywhere you go, for most people, a home is going to be the most expensive thing that you buy in your lifetime. But that said, there could also be some correlation between our rising property asset values and our rising mortgage debt. On one level, it's simply that because property values have risen so much, we also tend to take on larger loans to purchase those properties. So in light of that, can Singaporeans really afford their homes? There are many different ways to measure housing affordability. None of them are really perfect, but uh, let's try to keep things simple. Uh, let's look at a very uh, commonly known recommendation, and this recommendation has come from the CPF board as well. That's the 335 rule. It is a pretty conservative rule, and the measure of prudence here is that your monthly loan repayments don't exceed 30% of your income, that's the first three. The next part is you need to have 30% of the available capital to buy, that's the second three. And then the final part, the five, is that the total cost of your property should not exceed five times your annual income. So how many Singaporeans can really keep within these parameters? So if we use the typical median household income of 9,520 a month, or 114,240 per annum. This would mean the typical Singaporean home should not cost more than $571,200, five years of annual income. In addition, at $9,520 per month, the average home loan repayments should not exceed $2,856 per month. So how many homes exactly fall uh, within these 
parameters well let's take a look at the most uh, ubiquitous example probably which is the four room flat this is overall in sheer number probably the most common type of residential housing will come across now as of february 2022 the average price of a four room resale flat excluding any subsidies was about well 528,221 so more or less roughly within the, the parameters. Assuming we borrow 85% of this price, right? That's the maximum loan we can take for an HDB loan. That's uh, And then we take a 25-year loan tenure at the HDB loan rate of 2.6%. Uh, we see the monthly payments come to roughly around $2,000 a month, a little bit above $2,000 a month. And that's still well below the 30% of your income. So going by median income, the monthly repayments are actually still well within the parameters and the overall cost of the home is still manageable for a resale four-room flat. Now let's take a look at a BTO launch, a four-room flat in a BTO launch in a non-mature area like Jurong West. Okay, At the time that we're, we're speaking, uh, we can see four-room flat prices, new ones, are typically anywhere between 264000 to 321000 before any subsidies. So already that's well within the five years income range of a uh, typical Singaporean family. So uh, that's a pass there. If we take the maximum loan amount for this flat, again, over 25 years, uh, again, at the 2.6% uh, interest rate, the monthly loan repayments are only around just above 1200 a month. And remember, this is without subsidies. So if we're looking at these BTO flats, they are well within the price range of your typical median income Singaporeans. Now, when we get to private non-landed property or condos, uh, this is where things start to get a little bit sticky. So as of end February 2022, the average uh, price here, we are looking at over 1.4 million for your typical mass market fringe region condo. That in itself is already well above the uh, five-year income limit for the typical Singaporean family. We have to use bank loans for private properties. There's no HDB loans. So if we take the maximum loan of 75%, and then we again take a 25-year loan, and we assume an interest rate of around 2% per annum, although that does change, it goes up and down. We are gonna end up with a monthly repayment of over 4,500 a month, uh, well past the 30% income limit of most families. And of course, we should not forget that condos also come with monthly maintenance. This is around three to 400 a month. So it's quite significant. Uh, we need to take that into consideration as well, not just the home loan repayment. Then we come to the uh, sticky issue of whether or not we should consider this situation affordable. And this is where things get subjective. For example, if both you and your spouse are both permanent residents, right, or you are lifelong singles and so forth. This may restrict you to resale properties. And as we've seen, the resale flat is more expensive. So you might find that the price is past your sort of five year income level. And if you're on single income, you may even bust the 30% mortgage servicing ratio limit because it might be a little bit much for you to take on the whole mortgage on your own income. So in this sense, housing really does become more affordable to the sort of typical Singaporean family as opposed to a pure PR family or a family where only one person is dealing with the mortgage, it is much less affordable for them. There is a tangible difference here. Also, there is the issue of what you consider to be an acceptable quality of housing. For example, we've mentioned that a four-room flat is affordable to most median income Singaporeans. But some people are definitely going to feel that a four-room flat is not sufficient in their situation. Perhaps they have a bigger family, for example. But that being said, as far as just providing that literal roof over your head goes, HDB, we feel, has met this requirement quite well over the years. And there is, of course, the plus point that in many cases, those flats are a stepping stone to something greater. So even if it's not very comfortable to you right now, at least in many cases, your flat provides a stepping stone towards a bigger flat or a private home and so forth. And if that is sufficient for you, then I think you can say that yes, homes in Singapore are still affordable. With a pretty strong housing savings growth, it's perhaps not surprising that our property market is 
uh, pretty resilient as well. I think for the average Singaporean, there are always going to be options out there. It's just the issue of what you consider comfortable and what you consider acceptable housing. That's me, uh, Ryan Ong from Stacked Homes. Thanks for joining me for that discussion, uh, one with many different dimensions. So please uh, post your comments and questions below. Let us know what you think about this. Uh, let us know about your housing affordability situation uh, and how you're coming along. And do also give us a like uh, and do subscribe to us if you can. That will allow us to give you notifications when we post videos in future. And thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you again soon.